It's called the Mother Church of Country Music, the Ryman Auditorium in Nashville. Hundreds of country music stars and even a few rock and rollers have performed here. The Ryman has hosted presidents, operas, and marriages, but it's best known as being the former home of the Grand Ole Opry. And it all started with a steamboat tycoon named Tom Ryman and an evangelist named Sam Jones. After the Civil War, the railroad industry in the South took many years to rebuild, but the waterways flowed smooth and steady. Entrepreneurs like Tom Ryman started steamboat businesses along the Mississippi and Cumberland Rivers. But along with the cargo, Ryman ships often carried casinos, bar rooms, and dancing girls. But Tom Ryman's life changed the night he met Sam Jones. Sam Jones was born and raised in Cartersville, Georgia. A promising career as a lawyer was derailed when the bottle got the best of him. Jones would go on drunken binges for days at a time, neglecting his family and business. He was thrown out of bars for his drunken uproars and for failing to pay his tab. Then one day, Jones caught a glance of himself in a saloon mirror. He didn't like what he saw. I saw my hair matted, the filth and vomit on my clothes. One of my eyes totally closed and my lips swollen. And I said, is that all that is left of the proud and brilliant young lawyer, Sam Jones? Sam then remembered a promise he had made to his dying father. Sam's father said, you've brought so much heartache to my heart. Can I trust you? Will you promise me, Sam, that you'll meet me in heaven? Sam dropped to his knees and cried out to God so loudly the bartender thought he was having a heart attack. A miserable drunk fell to the floor that night, but the person who stood up was a new man. He dried out for three days, took a bath, shaved, bought a new suit, and went home to his wife. She didn't even recognize her own husband. I said, honey, God has given you a new husband and the children a new daddy. And I wonder if you will ever forgive me and start all over again. Sam took up the ministry and began preaching in tent revivals all around the country. Over the next 20 years, he reached several million people and converted over 500,000. His plain and simple preaching style was effective in reaching the common man. He just didn't have time for, for, for being dignified. He was just raw. He was real. He was pure. He was honest to a fault. I've read a lot of his sermons and I've read you know, a lot of his anecdotes and he was very funny uh, in, on, in the pulpit. Sam's unique combination of homespun humor and fire and brimstone drew thousands of people to his tent revivals. Jones once told a congregation in Toledo, if the devil were mayor of this town, he wouldn't change a thing. In May 1885, Jones held a tent revival on this spot in Nashville and 10,000 people showed up. Legend has it that Captain Tom Ryman showed up as well with his rowdy friends to heckle the evangelist. It, uh, it's an interesting story and it makes people remember him, but that's not actually what happened. Uh, at the time that uh, Sam Jones came to town, Tom Ryman was married and he and his children, ranging from age 14 to about three, uh, were, uh, went to the meeting. Sam Jones preached his heart out that night, and when the invitation was given, Steamboat Captain Tom Ryman was one of the first to respond. You know, Tom Ryman had a real love for his mother. Sam spoke on, you know, on mothers, and, uh, and it just cut Tom to the core. After the revival, Ryman gave the down payment for a tabernacle in Nashville. Tom Ryman uh, told Sam Jones that uh, when they built the auditorium, he would never have to preach in the tent again when he came to Nashville. Three years later, the money was raised to begin construction on the Union Gospel Tabernacle. After he accepted Christ, Ryman no longer sold liquor or allowed gambling on his boats. But even without the revenue from these sources, Ryman became the most successful shipping magnet in the South. He built a mansion on nearby Rutledge Hill, where he could watch his ships sail up and down the Cumberland River. Sam Jones and Tom Ryman became good friends over the next decade. When Ryman passed away in 1904, the man who gave the eulogy was none other than Sam Jones. There he called for a vote to change the name of the Union Gospel Tabernacle to the Ryman Auditorium. The response was a unanimous yay. Forty years later, the Grand Ole Opry radio show moved into the Ryman. From 1943 until 1974, the Ryman Auditorium was synonymous with country music. 
In 1993, Gaylord Entertainment began an $8 million renovation of the Ryman, and today it's a favorite venue for concerts. For many years, a popular gospel music series was entitled appropriately, Sam's Place. There's something in that building, and I, and I really think that it's because of the great preaching of men like Sam Jones and thinking of the people that were so convicted by the message and bowing their head on that pew and giving their life to Christ. If those pews could speak and tell, to tell stories, you know, just think of what it could tell. I don't really think that Nashville, Tennessee would, have, would, would be the city that it is known for music, known for publishing, Thomas Nelson. I mean, so many of the denomination's headquarters is right here in Nashville. I just don't think that would have been here had there not been a major revival, you know, in the 1800s. To me, it's the chief cornerstone of this city. I think it's the most important building in Nashville.